In the road to Canterbury, you play a medieval pardoner traveling down the famous road, selling pardons, promising redemption to naughty pilgrims. Uh, in order for you to make the most money, the pilgrims must also be tempted to commit these sins. Uh, pilgrims that commit too many sins, though, will eventually die, so you've got to milk them for all their precious coins before they kick the bucket. In the box, you're going to get seven pilgrim cards, and these are the pilgrims that you will attempt to pardon. Uh, each one has their own sin of choice, and it can help you score points when you pardon them. You're going to get 44 sin cards, and you play these from your hand in order to tempt the pilgrims. Uh, if there are ever seven sins on a pilgrim, they'll die. So, you know, the seven deadly sins. You have 21 pardon cards, and for every sin there is a pardon card. Pardon cards are the main way to collect money. Uh, for every face-up sin card in the area of a pilgrim you pardon, you get one pardon value. Pardon values are then squared. And that's how many point, uh, coins you get. You have 12 relic cards. And these are your modifiers or your action cards. They have silly names and they give you really neat abilities. And they can be fun to play around with. You have 75 corruption cubes. And each player is going to take all the cubes of one color. Uh, you put these in the circle of sin when you play a card. Um, and you place one on a pilgrim each time you pardon one of their sins. You get 90 coins, and this is the money you collect uh, when you pardon the pilgrims and various other bonuses. You get one Parson Palm. Uh, the Parson Palm uh, represents the sin that is currently, I guess, the hot topic among the pilgrims. So if the Parson Palm uh, is on that sin uh, that you pardon, you get an extra pardon value added to your score. So it's just like a uh, like a little bonus that you can get. You get five last right tokens, and when a pilgrim dies, the active player receives the uh, last right token, or one last right token. And this lets you take another turn, or you can save it to the end of the game and trade it for three coins. You have a card supply board, and this is a nice, fully illustrated board that keeps your cards nice and organized while you play. And since you can see the top three sin and parting cards, it takes some of the luck out of the game, which is nice. You have one game board, and this uh, is an area to put the pilgrims. Uh, the circle of sin is on here, and a map uh, of the road to Canterbury. You also get three bags to keep your coins in, and three player guides as well. So playing the game is pretty simple. Uh, all you do is play one card on your turn, and draw back up to five if you have less than that in your hand. You can play a sin card, you can pardon a sin, or you can play a relic card. Uh, as soon as the last spot on the road to Canterbury is marked, the game is over, and you begin final scoring. The Road to Canterbury has the most beautiful components I have ever seen in a standard edition board game. Uh, you can tell Griffin Games spared no expense in the production process. The outside box itself is textured linen and really sturdy. Almost everything in the box has a textured linen finish. The cards are sturdy, the board is fantastic, and the tiles are nice and thick. Uh, even the corruption cubes look like they were carefully smoothed and painted. So the coins are shiny and have printed pictures on them. Uh, for the components alone, this game is worth every single cent. Fortunately, the game itself is actually quite good and really fun. Uh, the game plays with two or three, uh, which seems like an odd number, but it makes sense since four would probably uh, be a little bit chaotic. The Road to Canterbury isn't a very hard game to learn, uh, but it can be easy to forget to place your corruption cubes uh, when you play a sin or, you know, do your first pardon. Uh, but after a while, it becomes second nature, and you'll definitely want to make sure you mark every accomplishment because games can be really tight. Uh, just the other day, I won a game by a single point, so games can uh, go like that sometimes. So it's hard for me to compare The Road to Canterbury to uh, anything else given the unique mechanics at play. 
um, you have a hand of five cards, and you play one card per turn, so uh, in that aspect, it's similar to other card games. Um, and there's some area control. There are, you know, different kinds of bonuses to get. Um, and there are really so many ways to collect coins that it may be a little overwhelming at first. Uh, but it's a lot of fun, and having all those avenues uh, makes it so you always have a good chance to, uh, to score some big points. So I like the Road to Canterbury quite a bit, and I'm thrilled to have it in my collection. It's one of the most fun two-player experiences I've had all year, and it plays just as great with three while adding an extra level of tension. So if you're looking for a gift to give someone for the holidays or some other special occasion, uh, the Road to Canterbury makes an excellent choice.